What can these types of leaders and all their different iterations do to create a culture of innovation in an organization? Are there specific things that can happen? Sure. Well, first off, what I just said, another way to say it would be a culture of innovation. I think sometimes people think innovation is just technical, but yeah. it literally means creating new sources of value. Mm. You know, an enterprise that creates new sources of value, new things, services, products, doesn't matter where it is, that really are genuinely of use to somebody. Mm. So in that sense, innovation is not about business, it's about any kind of enterprise. Um, <laughs> Peter Drucker used to have a very uh, elegant way of talking about this, the kind of famous management guru, I mean, really the most famous management thinker of the, certainly of the second half of the 20th century. He used to say the discipline, he called it the discipline of innovation, has three elements. One is you must have a sense of purpose. So he called it mission. So it's mm -hmm. back to that spirit. You know, are we, what are we doing here? And why does it matter? You know, do I tell my kids what I do? You know, do I care yeah. enough? So there must be a sense of mission or purpose. And secondly, you need to crystallize that into particular things you're trying to accomplish. So that's where the idea of vision comes in, right? Mm. So yes, here's what we're doing. Here's what matters. Here's the purpose of Sardar TV. You know, we're engaged in something here we think really matters. Oh, and in this little interview right now, and in this product we're doing right now, or this project, here's what we're actually trying to accomplish. So vision crystallizes this general sense of purpose into something more tangible, and and something you can say, this is what we're actually trying to accomplish in the next three months or two years. Um, so you have to have a sense of purpose, and you have to crystallize it into results or outcomes that really matter to people, and then you have to be willing to kind of abandon things. I think yeah. it, literally that was the word Drucker used to write about, he used to call it the discipline of abandonment. Wow. There are things that aren't working. Yeah. But, ah, golly, you know, I love doing those things. <laughs> and we've got old Charlie over here who's done it for 20 years. <laughs> I love old Charlie. So, I mean, it's not that you got to go abandon Charlie, but you got to help Charlie abandon something that's not working anymore. And, and that is in the large and in the small. And what I mean by in the large, Drucker used to often say, and for businesses, this is really tough. A lot of times, you've got to abandon a part of the business when it's still making a lot of money. Mm. And managers don't want to do that. Yeah. But it's really the past, not the future. And, and that it's sucking up a lot of resources. And even more than that, it's sucking up a lot of, you might say, mental resources. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. kind of defines us by who we were and not by who we need to become. And that's obviously a very tricky matter. So it may be in the large sense of, you know, this is a product that still makes a lot of money, but, you know, it, it's really also draining a lot of our resources, keep propping it up. At a certain point, he said, you often have to abandon that product. That may mean just spinning it off or selling it to somebody else, even when it's still making money. You know, But if you want to sell it off to somebody else, that's actually a good time to do it when it's still making money. But it, it reflects, again, this kind of generative spirit. You know, It's our past, not our future. And the exact same thing is true within a learning cycle. So what I was talking about before, about reflection, another way to say that is, at the individual and, and in team level, we've got to abandon things that used to be really good, but they're not helping us anymore. So there are our habits of the past, and you can again take that one step more and say, you know, that's what it means to be a human being. You know, to really be growing as a human being, you've got to be letting go of things, because those things which are very near and dear to your own ego structure and your sense of mm -hmm. who you are may actually be the things that are keeping you right now from being who you might become.